It's that time of year again. Time to check out the 10 most successful bikes of the 2019 Men's World Tour. Using the special secretive GCN Racing algorithm point scoring system, we give each race or stage a number of points and then calculate all the wins on each different bike. It is a pretty different top 10 from last year with five of the top 10 being new entries, which is always great to see. Let's have a quick recap then of last year's top 10. Number 10 was the Lapia Zelius SL. Number nine, the BMC Time Machine TM01. Number eight, the Specialized Venge Vias. Number seven, Argon 18 Galleon Pro. Number six, Bianchi Ultra XR4. Number five, the Scott Addict RC. Number four, the Specialized Venge. Number three, the Canyon Ultimate CF SLX. Number two, the Specialized Tarmac. And number one last year was the Pinarello Dogma F10. In at number 10, the Canyon Air Road with 104 points and a new entry. So the Air Road, a bike that's been around for quite a while now, has snuck into the top 10 by just one point over the Bianchi Akia TT bike. The points of the Aero came largely from the victories of Mathieu van der Poel, as remember he won the Dvors d'Or Vlaanderen as well as the Amstel Gold this year. In at number nine, another new entry, the Scott Foil RC of Mitchell and Scott with 105 points. So a stage win and overall victory started its campaign at the Tour Down Under, and there were no more World Tour victories until two stages at the Tour de France, and then a couple more at the Tour of Poland. In at number eight, another new entry. I've never thought that a hat trick. Anyway, the Ridley Noah Fast with 112 points, a bike that was used a victory by new recruit to the Lotto Sedal squad for 2019, Caleb Ewan. He took eight World Tour wins this year, that included three at the Tour de France and two at the Giro d'Italia. He certainly made that bike feel like, well, he'd been on it for years, I guess. In at number seven, another new entry, the Cannondale Super 6 with 170 points. Now, this bike was used to victory in all types of races, including a stage at Paris-Nice, the Tour of Flanders, where Alberto Bettiol was the surprise winner, you could say, and also there was a stage win at the Tour de France too. And I quite like the retro style decals on that one too, nice. Dropping three places this year, the Canyon Ultimate CF SLX with 185 points. Now, the Ultimate CF SLX is used by two teams in the World Tour, Team Katusha Alpsin and Movistar. The bike actually got its first win pretty early on in the year at the UAE Tour when Alejandro Valverde climbed to victory on our very own Tom Last's favourite climb, Jabel Hafi. It was then at all three Grand Tours that the bike collected the rest of its points with stage wins, as well as the overall victory at the Giro d'Italia with Richard Carapaz. Right, a new entry now, in at number five, the Pinarello Dogma F12. Launched at the Tour de Yorkshire back in May, it didn't have quite as dominant season as the previous road race bike of Team Ineos, or Team Sky, when they used the Dogma F10. Included, though, in its wins are a couple of stages at the Criterium de Dauphiné, as well as the overall victories at the Tour de Suisse, Tour de France, and the Tour of Poland. Moving up three places this year is the Argon 18 Galleon Pro with 393 points, as used by the Astana Pro team. No less than 14 victories in the World Tour were claimed on board one of the sleekest bikes in the peloton, in my opinion. Who can forget one of the best victories when Jakob Fuglsang nearly came off in liege bastogne liege on that descent and almost didn't take the chequered flag. Luckily he did. Either way, the Galleon Pro is expected to totally drop out of the top 10 for 2020, as the Astana Pro team are switching to Villa Triestina bikes, and as far as I know, Argon 18 won't be present. Number three, down one place this year for the Specialized S-Works Tarmac SL6. You got 428 points though. Now, when you sponsor the Koenig Quickstep and Bora Hansgrohe, who had a combined 66 victories this year, it's hardly surprising that the Tarmac model is still up there near the top of the list. It took its first victory on stage three of the Tour Down Under and a few spring classics too. Het Newsblad, Strada Bianchi, E3 Bink Bank, as well as stages in races around that time too. 
Also, it was first over the line in a number of stages in all three Grand Tours. It then closed the season with overall victory at the Tour of Huanxi. In at number two, and up four places from last year, the Bianchi Ultra XR4 with 487 points. Not only did it move up four places in GCN Tech's most successful bikes of the year, but it also took victories in 18 World Tour races in 2019. The Jumbo Visma duo of Dylan Krunewegen and Primoz Roglic were familiar faces at being first across the line. Roglic, of course, took overall victories in the Tour de Romandie, Vuelta a España, the UAE Tour, Terreno Adriatico, and stage wins here and there too. This was a big year for the Celeste bike. Up three places, and at number one, it was a new bike last year, replacing the Venge Vias. This year it got 600 points, and it's had an absolute cracker of a season. The new Specialized Venge. 43 victories on board this model of bike. Incredible. A reason for it climbing the ladder to first spot is probably because this latest model of the Venge is arguably a better all-rounder than before. Probably because of its weight loss, it's lost 400 grams compared to its predecessor, which is a massive amount on a bike, enabling an aero bike these days to be used in more races because it's closer to the weight limit of 6.8 and the riders probably aren't so well, as particular as they previously were. Let's have a look then at the three top manufacturers in the World Tour this year. Specialized, they got 1,158 points. Bianchi, 599. And Argon 18, 411. Remember those Specialized, they had two bikes inside of that top 10. There was a total of 4,036 points on offer this season, meaning that Specialized have won over 28% of the secret GCM points available. And interesting too, is that all of those points on the Specialized bikes were done, and wait for it, disc brakes. Oh I'm not gonna God. open that can of worms, but basically all the riders race on disc brakes all year round. Remember though, it's not all about the bike. And the majority of this success has been driven by good old fashioned hard graft and training and hours and hours in the saddle. I hope you've enjoyed this look at the most successful bikes of the World Tour in 2019. And as ever, remember to like and share this video with your friends too. And don't forget to check out the GCN shop at shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com. And remember to subscribe to the GCN Tech channel. Click on the subscribe button right now and also the little notification icon next to it. And if you want to see the most successful bike of the women's peloton this year, how about clicking just down here? I'm looking forward to next year's already.